this video, I want to show you how to set up a multi-zone energy model. And I'm starting with um, an example geometry that I have uh, organized um, into layers where the zones are on the default layer and all my windows are in a separate uh, blue layer and my boundary condition objects are um, in this BCOM layer setup. Uh, on the grasp side, I have uh, basically um, I'm reusing the shoebox uh, workflow template uh, where I've cleared out all of these um, uh, geometry inputs. Um, so to get started, what I want to do is I want to um, basically assign a zone template to these two zones uh, and a different zone template to the remaining four zones. Um, and uh, so what I want to do is I want to I'm going to select these boundary condition objects uh, and assign them uh, to be the ground boundary condition objects to get started. So set multiple B reps here. Actually, we will not have adiabatic surfaces, so I'm going to remove this. Um, and now I'm done with these boundary condition objects, so I'm going to hide them. Um, as a next step, we want to um, assign the zones, so we can start with these zones um, and I'm just going to bring in a new BREP parameter and you'll see why I'm not connecting them right here in a second. So um, I select multiple zones here and then I want to assign a different zone template to these zones so I'm going to um, provide them in a separate BREP parameter. And now um, as you can see these zone, the way these zones were modeled, they're they're, um, they're adjacent to these two other zones, but they're uh, um, in order to be able to detect zone adjacencies, these surfaces need to be congruent. Uh, so we need to split them uh, basically at this line here, and the same is true for the other one. Luckily, there's uh, a component that does that for us automatically, and we'll bring this in. This is the uh, intersection component, and um, we could just kind of uh, provide um, these zones uh, as such and then for example we could just bake uh, the geometry onto that layer and uh, inspect the geometry and we would see a perfectly intersected geometry. I'm not going to do this for now. Um, what I want to do is I want to do basically do this intersection on the fly and um, now once I've kind of joined them together I basically get a list uh, with all of my zones as an output um, so now I get all my zones as an output here and they're perfectly intersected six um, zones um, uh, now if I want to assign different zone templates to these uh, zones I need to uh, kind of organize them in a data tree and I'm going to do this by using the entwine component and um, I'll just pass these two different zones uh, accordingly um, and then um, this component will preserve this data structure so we'll get um, two, two branches with uh, the zones in them and we can use then this explode tree component uh, and basically uh, get the first set of zones on this output and the second set of zones on the other output. Uh, I want to kind of hide this preview for now, I'll turn the preview off, and now as I said I want to assign two different zone um, settings, so I'm duplicating the setup here from the, from the shoebox setup, and I'm going to pass the first set of zones up here and the second set of zones all the way at the bottom. Now this is already kind of automatically picking things up for this um, setup here, but I have to, the ones that I duplicated I still need to connect, and I hold down shift to get the plus arrow, add the zones to the setup, and if I want them to preview nicely, I can also just hold down shift and add them to the preview. Um, what's going on here? Okay, I need to disconnect this and connect the geometry, not the zones actually. Um, now we have set up our, our model and uh, everything is nicely intersected and we should see the adjacencies being picked up. And a good way to check this um, is with the um, surface analysis component um, that you can use to just connect a model 
and then um, inspect whether the, uh, the partition walls are coming out correctly. So let's uh, visualize partition walls and bring in the component and then connect this here. And you should see, if you turn off the preview for a second, uh, that the partitions have been identified correctly between those zones. Um, okay, so let's hide this and then bring back the zone preview. And now, you, as you can see, um, this component also started rendering the zone names in the center. So this is a useful thing, uh, and we can actually make use of it, uh, especially if you want to assign different templates to these zones. So I want to name the zones accordingly. So I want to um, have office zones, and I want to have meeting room zones. So I'm going to duplicate this meeting. And now these zones will be my meeting rooms. So I'm going to connect this here. Um, and then the other remaining four zones will, will be my office zones. So now I can I'm using these kind of labels to identify this. And you can see that this automatically kind of appending numbers to the zones if there are, um, if there are multiple of them. So we're almost done. Uh, we need to grab the windows. So we can use our layer structure to select them all, select objects, and then we'll just assign them here. So set multiple B reps. Um, as you can see, um, this component is already set up to kind of draw uh, these like um, scaled down window components. What we could do is we could uh, increase these surfaces to cover the full uh, facade area or just use this as a slider and ignore the fact that this is called window to wall ratio. Um, All right, so we won't have shading in this uh, simple first case. Uh, we can set this to 100%, maybe we have to increase this up here, and then set it to 100% uh, of kind of the original size. Okay, um, let's turn off this preview to bring back this uh, visualization. And now, now um, we need to obviously provide the settings accordingly, and I wanna use, um, um, settings from the library um, and I can we'll just make kind of click on this button and then um, select uh, apply a zone template from the library I'm, go I'm gonna start with uh, these templates up here medium office uh, and then populate uh, this as my meeting room and uh, I want to make sure uh, that I'm updating the HVAC settings here so I'm gonna pick COP of three and a COP of three here, and then commit enter. So now we have set up our meeting rooms. And then uh, for the offices, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna just populate them with um, an office template. However, for the office, we already, in a previous tutorial, we created our own template, which was um, this one down here. And I'm just gonna use this kind of moving forward. Um, and then I'm double checking that this is picking up the settings that we had specified earlier. So we had specified the COP, we had modified the lighting power density, and we had uh, changed the construction to this U value 0 0.2. Uh, so this looks good, um, just hit OK. And uh, now I'm ready to basically run the simulation. So um, we've used our simple templates and we, we kind of quickly assigned all these settings to create this multi-zone energy model. Now the simulation is complete and we can use the exact same workflows to skim through these parameters and investigate um, the energy balance and the, the EUI as we did before. Uh, a couple of other useful things in this um, in this model uh, inspector component uh, is, for example, the floor area. We can also report um, the floor area um, for our programs that we have the different zone types that we have assigned. So you see that there's the meeting rooms being reported and the office is being reported. If I have